I used to design all my websites in pixels when I was a beginner, because after all, that is the only unit of measurement that any design software will give you. But how do you build a website that scales accurately from desktop to mobile? And how do you know what measurements to use from REMs to percentages to pixels even, and also viewport height and width? Today, that's what we're gonna cover in this video, so stick along until the very end to see how we transform this Figma website into an actual responsive website using REMs, viewport width, percentages, all the above. Stay tuned for that. Okay, so to get started, I've created this little diagram for us here where we can see all the different measurements between pixel, REMs, percentages, and viewport width. So to understand pixels, pixels is very simple. It's the static measurement that all Figma, Adobe XD, all of those is the only measurement that they're gonna give you. So pixels essentially means 500 pixels, will look like 500 pixels. It doesn't matter what viewport we're in. It doesn't matter if we're in the biggest viewport, in the smallest, in tablet. It doesn't matter. 500 is 500. Next up is REMs. To understand REMs, we need to remember that every viewport has a standard set size for typography. And in most cases, if you set a body into a builder like Webflow, it will usually be 16 pixels. So most viewports have it set to around 16 pixels, but you should double check that before you start building in REMs. So here we have an REM cube, and all I've done is I've set one REM REM to one REM. And we'll get into how you can actually take a pixel into an REM a little bit later on in this video. But for now, remember that 16 pixels is essentially one REM in most cases for the desktop breakpoint. Next up is percentages. Now percentages is pretty self-explanatory. It's just a percent of a parent div. And so in this case, if I go into the extra mode, we'll see that the parent div is here outlined in blue. And in our case, I've given the measure for the percentage block to be 50%. So we can actually understand what that percentage would be like. So if I want to changes to maybe something like 100%, we'll see that it takes up the entirety of the parent block, but that's only depending on what the actual size of the parent block is. We can also see that here in the layer panels that we only have the div block here that's telling us what the actual size is. Then we've got the text and also the parent div. Next up, we have viewport width here. Now you could also have viewport height, but in this case, we're only gonna take a look at viewport width. And to understand it, it's much easier to understand your entire viewpoint as a percentage. So the entirety of the viewport is 100%. So if I want to have this be 50 viewport, that is what that would look like. If I want it to be around 20, that is what that would look like and 100% it would take up the entirety of the viewport. So there isn't a single pixel left or right left for the imagination. <laughs> and so a really great use case for this would be for anything that has to span the entirety of the viewport. Doesn't matter what size we're in, whether it's the largest or the smallest, it will take up only exactly 100% of the viewport. So now that we've laid out all the measurements, when do we actually use REMs versus viewport width versus pixels? When's the best case scenario for which measurement? The best way to explain this is to dive directly into Webflow and show you exactly how I would transform this pixel-based design into REMs, viewport width, and all of that. So let's get started. The first thing that we can attack here is going to be the static design that we've got here for the hero section. And the reason why is because we can see that as we start to scale up and down our viewport here, our text, our images, our nav is all very static. So we want it to move with the viewport as we scale it up and down. Now, the easiest way to do that is to use our viewport width. The reason why is because we want our entire design to move depending on the viewport. We could also do this with a percentage, but it's easier to just use the viewport width because that is obviously the design measurement that we want to use. So for this case, I'm going to try something along the lines of view port 80 or maybe even 90 just to see what we look like. And it's pretty good already. We can see that as we start to scale down, our viewport is now going along with it. And so this is now starting to be more fluid, more responsive. And so we can then change around our justifications. So now that we see that the width of the section has been measured by viewport width, but what do we do with this scenario right here? The section is right next to the nav. It's not giving it any space. How do we actually create this design with responsive measures? So if we use option in Figma, we'll see that this distance here is 64 pixels. How do we create this 64 pixels using REMs or viewport height and which one do we even use? So in this case, we're gonna demonstrate it using the margin section here, and we're gonna type in 64 pixels. So that is the exact measurement that Figma has given us, but how do we actually convert that into REMs? It's very simple to do. All you have to do is go into your input directly, click on the divide, and type in divided by 16 REM, and it'll change it directly into the number that it should be. So four REM is essentially four times the root element of 16. So 16 times four equals 64 pixels. 
pixels. It's kind of a difficult math equation every time you need to actually design something. But as soon as you start to understand the REMs, the percentages and all of that, it becomes a lot more responsive once you have the final design. So we're going to go ahead and move into the nav here and copy the same design here. So instead of 1,076 pixels, we're going to convert that into 90 viewport width and we're just going to change the alignment here. And then we can start to play around with the text. So we'll do the same thing with all these margin and paddings here. We're gonna convert these into REMs, doing divided by 16 REM, same thing here, divided by 16 REM. And then the text, we can do the exact same thing. So divided by 16 REM, we can see that everything has now been converted into REMs. And as we start to move down the viewports, we can see that our text is scaling along with it. We can see that the everything is starting to move along a little bit nicer. So now that we've got most of these converted into REMs, how do we ensure that this image, for example, stays constantly an appropriate size for our div and for our section? Well, one thing we could do is convert this into REMs as we've done here. So we can see that this is now 30.62 REMs or something else we could do is use the percentage measurement or even the viewport width. So what we have to do here is go into our right div block here and we can give it a width of around 50 viewport width, something like that, maybe 40 in this case, and then go into our image and go 100%. And we can see that it takes up the entirety of its parent element. So this is a pretty easy and simple demo into when and where you need to use viewport width, viewport height, percentage, and REMs. But lastly, when do we use pixels? So pixels for me, the best case that we can use pixels is only in very small cases, like when we're using border width, when we're using border radius as well. That's also a great case for it because you want it to be the exact same radius as you have it in Figma. So let's go ahead and give this a very quick border of maybe around 12 pixels. Give it a quick styling here of around three pixels or four and something like that. So now we can see, okay, we would only use pixels in this case when we're changing the border, when we're giving it some sort of small backdrop, some radius, something like that. So in all of these cases here, where we have a lot of padding, we've got the text in pixels, the height in pixels. This would not be a great case for pixels. So in this case, we would have to change the 25 and divide it by 16 rem and then do the same thing here with the 20 divided by 16 rem and then the same thing with these. So we do divided by 16 rem and we can use our measurements here to convert all of that into rems. So now that we have it into REMs, we can see that as we scale down, things look a lot easier to read. Things look a lot better when we're actually in the smaller breakpoints. And we can see that in the large breakpoints, nothing really has happened in terms of the REM. So if we wanted to scale this all the way up, we would use something like viewport width to make sure that in terms of the viewport and the viewport height, everything is staying constant. If you learned something from this video, do let me know down below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys on the next one.